Well, Kate Winslet joins me now. Um, incredible performances from both of you, especially as it was improvised. Yes. Yeah. It was. So Dominic Savage, the director, um, the way that he works is he... He works with the lead actor and creates a story that you all agree upon, but there are no actual scripted words written. So it's really terrifying and you get there and you make it up as you go along. So it's, it's, really, um, uh, it's really challenging yeah. and, um, and quite an exhausting, demanding process. And of course, what you do get to see is, you know, people really laid bare and a lot of vulnerability and, um, and it just goes much, much deeper than a sort of a conventional film script would because Very much so. the words are really coming from the heart. Yeah, it's like being there in the room. Was it always going to be you two? Was it always going to be you and your daughter to do this part? Is no, no. Oh. So Dominic approached me and I had seen many of the I Am Ruth that he had done before. He did a particularly extraordinary one with Samantha Morton that was incredibly yes. powerful. And I sat down with him when we started talking about ideas and that's how he starts the creation of each episode. And we, we found ourselves both sharing conversations about parents and daughters and parents of teenagers mm -hmm. um, and he has teenage children as well and so it just resonated with us this idea of mental health which is of course such an important topic at the moment and how hard people are finding it to raise children in the current climate as teenagers with social media and this sort of addiction to phones and them getting sucked into a completely unknowable world and it separates them at times from families and becomes very very hard to be not only a parent, but particularly hard to be a mother. You know, there's no manual and we stare at our children and we sometimes think, I don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to tell a story that was as truthful as could be um, without leaving anything out. I mean, we, we, we cover a lot of fairly mm -hmm. topical, quite difficult um, subjects. And uh, yes, my daughter, ended up becoming a part of it because Dominic said, well, who should we get to play the daughter? And we talked about some other young actresses who are actually a lot younger than Mia because the character's around 16, 17 years mm. old and Mia's 21. So it honestly did not occur to me. And he said, well, what about Mia? And I said, well, <laughs> you have to audition her and that has to be separate to me. Right. And it worked out. <laughs> I know, it's, it's quite remarkable. Were you able to work with her as an actress? I mean, did it make it easier or more difficult? I mean, what was the... Or could she just be, this is another actress I'm working with? No, it was, a, it, it was a bit of both. Yeah. I mean, I sort of clicked into work mode at, in some stages and I, I, I like to really support younger actors anyway, so technically I was able to show her a few things here and there, just little tricks that I've learned along the way. But as far as performance... She didn't need me <laughs> at all. <laughs> she just did it. Didn't need me. There were even the moments when she'd look at me and go, shut up, Mum, shut up, shut up. Let me, let me, let me do it, let me do it. <laughs> so, um, but it was really amazing working alongside her and actually being, you know, blown away by her courage. Mm. And she's, she's very, very powerful. And I think this young generation of actors, actually, I have to say, there's a, there's a sort of a naturalism to, to their acting. And they're just braver. They, they have a voice. They speak up for themselves. And they have a power that I feel I never really had. Um, so mm -hmm. it was really, it was hard um, and very upsetting, but it was wonderful. Because it is upsetting and it will resonate with so many people, especially because you get to that stage when you're a mum and it's like they, they turn into someone else sometimes. Yeah. And it's because they're, they're on their phones all the time. All the pressure of that. It's when she, when she, don't want to give too much away because I know people want to watch it, but there is a scene where, where you, your character finds the phone mm -hmm. and sees the kind of abuse that she's been getting mm -hmm. and the kind of photographs and all of that. And it's absolutely heartbreaking. It is heartbreaking. It really yeah. is. It is completely heartbreaking. And it's, you know, that scene that you talk about, we wanted to include it because you know, that thing of being a mother and thinking, what do I do? Do I just leave them alone and give them their independence and trust? But actually, it's very, very hard to just trust that they know how to take care of themselves these days and, and how to care for them and just simply what to say. You know, sometimes when, you know, a teenager looks at you and says, what? There's a yeah. whole universe that you want to ask them about within that one thing, but sometimes you have to just leave them to it and, and step away. And as a parent, it's very hard. And so intervening in the way that we chose for my character to do with the daughter and her absolute addiction to her phone, um, it was quite powerful because I know that many parents would 
wish that they felt that they could do that yeah. and believed that they could make a difference if they did take that phone and yeah. say, no, this is making you ill. And it's something you personally feel very strongly about. I remember the last time that, that we spoke, you, you were talking about that and how worried you were, you know, about mm. the fact that so many young people are... It is an addiction. They are addicted to their I think, phones. I think with COVID, Lorraine, I think COVID has really not helped young people. I think particularly that generation, that sort of 13, 14, all the way up to 16, 17, they were missing experiences at school, just social interactions, that yeah. basic thing of walking into room, a room and introducing themselves to a stranger for the first time. It's, it, you know, these are simply things that they haven't experienced yet and missed out on. Yeah. And they feel angry about it. They feel cheated. They feel frustrated with... Um, with the systems that were put in place that prevented them from um, from being able to see their friends um, and they feel that something was absolutely taken from them so I think now more than ever this sort of story was very important it was really important to us to tell this story because it is about what so many of us are going through and obviously doing something like this with my own daughter there was always naturally going to be some degree of overlap um, for us in terms of personal experience but um, you know, we just threw everything we had at it and, and, and just wanted to make something that will hopefully resonate with people and, and, and encourage them to have those conversations Absolutely. if they are worried about Absolutely. their children. It's so important. And again, the realism, it goes to the fact that, you know, mostly, of course, most of it is between your two characters, but then there's a teacher, there's yes. a brother, and the teacher actually... Is in real true life. Yes. Yes. Yeah, so, so a wonderful, wonderful <laughs> teacher named Simon Kingsley Pallant, and he was actually Mia's teacher. Wow. So Dominic Savage loves to cast real people, and so, so we had Simon. I was able to contact him and say, I think this could be something really special. He's and really good. <laughs> he's really, really good. He's a very talented actor and very talented writer, actually, as well. Just as an aside, but he was Mia's English and drama teacher. Wow. So that was an amazing connection because I've known him for quite. A long time yeah. as her teacher um, and then there's a doctor dr susie who yes. comes in towards the end of the story and she was a real doctor named dr susie that was her mm -hmm. practice that was her practitioner's room that we were in and mia and i did not meet her until the cameras were rolling and we walked into the room right. and we rolled on that take and that take actually was 48 minutes long it was one long conversation that has been very deftly edited into mm. the story. But she is a real doctor who deals with those kinds of things that you see within that scene every single day. And it was very, very impactful on both Mia and myself to meet and, and, and look in the eyes of someone like that. Well, it's going to be on Channel 4 next Thursday. I am Ruth at 9 o'clock. Yeah. Um, the great thing about that, though, is these days you can watch it whenever you like, which is fantastic. You so can. once it goes on, you can do that. I really think it's something that they should show in schools to get people talking or maybe showing groups or things. To I, would, just, I, I you know, hope that, so. I have hope a life so. outside of, of this. Yes, I, I, I would really hope so. And I think the other thing that we felt strongly about, too, was not setting this story in a sort of a lower socioeconomic environment because often I feel that stories about mental yeah. health or teenage mental health Big often point. utilize a totally different social class and I was really against that because I think it's the middle classes who are stumbling upon mental health issues and it takes them by complete surprise mm -hmm. it's endemic I think everyone is experiencing it on some level and so we wanted deliberately to set it in this kind of quite simple middle class family um, where it sort of affects absolutely everyone in some in some way and becomes incredibly corrosive, um, and and we just wanted it to be a story that that resonates with with people, even if it's in some small way, sure. maybe even a very big way. So yeah, I think it would be incredible if they showed it. In well, it's, it's a remarkable work. Thank you so much for coming Thank in. You. I know you've got another wee tiny film coming out, um, <laughs> Avatar, or something like that. Yeah, Avatar. That's coming something out. So you need to come back and talk to us about that too. I but will. this is really good. You must be so proud of your girl. I am very, very, very yeah. proud of her. She's yeah. done so very well. proud indeed. Thank you.